Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm participating in Save the Crafty YouTuber Video Hop and we are a bunch of talented crafters making card making videos to inspire you. We do this to help each other reach our monetization goals here on YouTube. So that's what the hop is about. All you have to do is watch, like a video, consider subscribing to the channel, and click the link in the video description box to go to the next video on the hop. Don't forget to leave a comment because we have tons of prizes to give away from some fantastic sponsors. And please indicate if you're located in the US or internationally so that prizes can be awarded appropriately since some of these prizes have restrictions as maybe not shipping overseas. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and let's go ahead and get started. So for my card today, I'm going to be using some Thermal Web products in the line of the Gina K line. I'm using the Glitz Glitter Gel in a couple of spring colors. So the gels I'm using today are Sweet Mango, Grass Green, and Turquoise Sea, and I absolutely love these colors. This gel is absolutely gorgeous. It's not like your regular embossing paste. It has beautiful texture to it. And I'm also going to be using cardstock in the same exact color so I can do a tone on tone look. So you can see here how gorgeous the Glitz Glitter Gel, that's a mouthful right there, matches perfectly with the cardstock that Gina K has in stock. Now that I have everything cut out, I just need to bring in my craft mat as I don't wanna get any of that gel onto my work surface. So again, here are the the three strips I've already pre-cut out. Now to line these up, I'm going to grab my mini Misty. I know a lot of the times we use our Misty for stamping, but it also helps you line paper up, especially if you have these little strips like this, it helps you line them up evenly so you can have a great spacing between each one and you know they're going to stick together perfectly. So in order to get the, these strips together, I'm just using some regular packing tape. So this is the packing tape that we wrap our Christmas presents with or seal an envelope with, but it's perfect for putting strips of paper together. Now I am not worrying about this tape because this tape is going to be on the back so no one's ever going to see it but in order for this project to work I need to make sure that these strips are lined up perfectly now I do have a little bit of a gap towards the top of that C turquoise C piece so I'm just going to gingerly pull up that paper and it's okay if I get a few pieces that come up with the tape I'm not really con concerned about that because again that is on the back side of the card and nobody's going to see it but I do want to make sure that all these pieces are perfectly lined up before I go to my next step. So now I can go ahead and put down that tape and I'm actually going to put an extra piece just for good measures. Now since everything's lined up, you can see I have a beautiful panel and you cannot see the lined indentations between there because I used the tape. But the paper is kind of flimsy, so I do want to put a backer on this. So for my backer, I just grabbed a piece of white cardstock in the same measurements. Now this will end up to be a A2 card, which comes out to be, what's that, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is going to be trimmed down a little bit later because these strips are meant to have a white layered border. So I'm not going to use the white paper on the sides in the end, but it's going to come in handy for me to be able to pick up these stripes and not have to have the flimsiness of it. All right, now we can go on to our next thing. I'm going to do stenciling on this. And this beautiful stencil is from Simon Says Stamp and I'll link all the products below that I use today. But I am going to grab an empty box because I wanna pull out my pixie spray. This pixie spray from Thermal Web is a magic saver for me. All you do is you spray it on the back of your stencils and it gives it a little bit of like tacky adhesiveness to put that stencil down now on your paper. The good thing is it's not going to rip your paper. It's just gonna hold those delicate um, stencils in place without having to worry about putting extra tape down or it's shifting and moving when you're using it. Now I'm going to bring in that beautiful striped panel and because I have my pixie dust on this, this stencil is going to lay perfectly flat on top of this paper. 
I'm not going to have to use any other tape, no purple tape today, no painter's tape. I'm just going to hover that right over to where I want those little dots to be. And then I can just press down. Now this stencil is not going to move while I work on my project. And that is what's so great about the Pixie Dust. Next, I'll come in with those Glitz Glitter Gels. I keep saying that is a mouthful for me. <laughs> And I'm going to put the matching colors on each one of the stripes. So this is going to give me a very pretty rainbow-ish color going across my card. But look how gorgeous this is. I have to stop and just tell you how gorgeous this is. I'm going to mix it up. It's definitely nothing like anything I've ever seen on the market. It is very, very smooth. And it's... It's light at the same time. It's really hard to describe, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm coming in with that uh, green grass or grass green, and I'm just going to lay it down right over the coordinating cardstock. Now I do want some of it to go ahead over into that sweet mango. So I'll have a nice transition between the gel. So I'm lightly just pulling down that glitter gel. And with anything that I have extra, I am going to put back in my container because I do not want to waste this gorgeous stuff. So I'll just very lightly keep going across to make sure I have each one of those tiny little holes cover. And then I can just go ahead and scrape it right back into that jar. One more time, I'll go over, get the rest of that, and then scrape it. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, and it's just for cleanup sake, just make sure you go around your rim to get any of that extra gel. So this way you don't have like a really cruddy lid and you're going to know that this is going to close solidly. We really don't want to air this out. Next, I'm going to come in with just a little bit of water on a paper towel and I'm going to clean off that palette knife. This is going to help me make sure that I do not get any of that green into that sweet mango. And I'm also going to use that paper towel to kind of brush away any of that green over to the other side, just so when I start working into that sweet mango, I'm not going to cross contaminate anything. Now look how gorgeous this orange is. Oh, it's so pretty. I just love this stuff. I have to have it in like every color now. Again, I'm just going to grab out a little bit. And I will pull down from the top. Anytime I'm stenciling, I do like to start at the top of a stencil and work my way down. I also have a playlist that I share right here on YouTube, and it's all about backgrounds. A lot of those have to do with stenciling. So I'll go ahead and link that above here for you to go ahead and check that out as well. Again, I'm coming in with even motion on this. Just getting a light dusting of that gel. Again, I don't want to waste any of it, so I'm putting it right on back in that jar. And I'm going to go ahead and seal that. One more time, I want to wipe off that palette knife. Don't forget to do that because otherwise you're cross contaminate your colors. And I would take that paper towel, again, just pushing over some of that excess gel over just right onto that line. And lastly, we have this beautiful turquoise C. Look how gorgeous these colors are. I'm just going to go ahead and mix that up just a little bit. And again, bring it right to the same coordinating color panel. And then I'll go ahead and start swiping down. Any excess, again, I'm going to put back into that jar. Unless I cross contaminate, I will be able to save a lot of this gel just by being careful and making sure that I get that color back into just the right spots without having any of that orange put into the container. Again, I'm just going to wipe the top of my jar before I close it. All right, now since we're done with all that, I can go ahead and grab another paper towel. I'm going to wet that down and I'm just going to wipe up some of that excess gel. And while I'm doing this, I'm also putting those colors kind of together. So they kind of mold right into the next color right next to it. And then I can clean up 
see that gorgeous color and I don't have a lot of that green but once I pull the stencil up you're going to see that we have a great blend of colors this is the part I always like it's like Christmas to me is just pulling back the stencil and look how yummy that looks oh my god it's super pretty it gives me a really nice design on the back without overwhelming anything absolutely stunning look how glittery that gel is it's amazing all right now i'm going to pull out this stamp set from gina k designs and this is called petals and wings and i just have some gina k paper in my mini misty and i just want to stamp out a sentiment now i don't want anything that's going to be really too distracting on my card today but i do just want a cute little sentiment so I'm placing one of the sentiments right there in the left hand corner towards the bottom and I'm going to use my Gina K amalgam ink. This is a beautiful crisp black ink that I'm loving using for my sentiment stamping. So I'll close my misty lid, make sure everything is tucked nicely into that corner and then I'll go ahead and ink this up. Now I do believe you can get this ink in the larger size, but for all of my Gina K inks, I have them in the cute little cubes. So I don't have a big one of these, but I do believe they're available in a larger size. I'll go ahead and press that down. Now, since this is a brand new stamp set, I'm just going to double stamp this. Now, if I had cleaned off the residue, which is just a small amount of residue when we get our new stamps, I could have just stamped this once. I'll go ahead and press that down. And now we have a great sentiment. I do want to add something around that sentiment because I feel like it's kind of just getting lost. There are like these little round, I call them bubble pieces or like little tiny circles. And I'm just going to add these right around that sentiment. So it's really going to pull in a design from the little dots that are on our background that's over to the side drying. It's going to kind of tie that in right to this sentiment piece. Now, if you wanted to, you can stamp this sentiment towards the middle of this, but I do want to add some details a little bit later. So that's why I'm making sure to stamp my sentiment off to one side. Now, since I have those little dots there, like I said, it's going to pull in that same design from the bottom of this card panel. All right, now since that's done, I can go ahead and pull this out of my misty, and I am going to crop this down. Now I got a brand new or relatively brand new cutter and this is the small tonics cutter and I will have to say it is definitely my favorite paper trim trimmer now. I'll make sure to link that in the description box below. It's really small, it sits right on the corner of my desk and it's perfect for just those quick little cuts the only thing on this that I haven't like kind of figure out how to use correctly is like the grid lines if I want to score something, but that's okay. I have a score off to the side. Now I'm going to come in with the same colors that we did with the strips of our card today and I'm going to stamp out some butterflies. I have the coordinating matching cubes for all of this, um, these colors. And I'm just going to stamp the coordinating color right onto the coordinating background. And you're going to see how perfectly these Gina K inks match with her card stock. So as I stamp that down, look how gorgeous that is. Now I'm not going to bother getting a towel or anything or cleaner to clean off that little butterfly. I'm just going to use my hands. This butterfly is included in that petals and wing stamp set that I just pulled the sentiment from. So I go ahead and stamp that green one and look how gorgeous that is. And I just going to stamp one of these for each color because I want to have a cute little trio of butterflies floating across my card. I'll go ahead and stamp that one down and now we are ready to start die cutting. I do have the matching die set for this and I've already grabbed out the large butterfly. Now this butterfly is going to allow me to have some of that beautiful cardstock color right on the outline of that little butterfly, that darker color. Excuse my head here, I'm just gonna grab myself some purple tape and that's going to hold that die in place as I run it through my die cut machine. 
Now I have a video on this setup on how I cut with my Gemini Junior and I'll make sure to place that above and below. All right, now since I went ahead and I ran all those through, my sheet has dried, I've already trimmed off the sides and now I have a nice sturdy piece to put onto this card panel. I'm going to grab my ATG gun and use this to adhere that panel onto a Gina K um, white card stock. Now my tape runner did run out, but never fear because I have my Gina K tape runner handy in the corner of my desk. So I just went ahead and grabbed that. And now I can put this sparkly panel onto a card base. Now remember I did say that these strips were cut down because I wanna have that nice little border around the edge. I like to close my cards now before I put on the panel so I know that I'm nice and straight when I do that. So I'll just go ahead and line this up. Excuse my head again, but I really need to get over this product uh, project to make sure it's going to be lined up correctly. And then I can go ahead and press that down. Now for my sentiment, I'm using some double-sided tape and this is from 3M. And I have a little strip that I had cut off down the center from a while ago and I'm not going to waste that strip. I'm just gonna gently pull that up and make sure it's directly on the back of that um, sentiment strip. And now I'll just go ahead and grab another piece. But look how beautiful and dimensional that flat panel is with that gorgeous glitter uh, gel. It is absolutely so pretty, you guys. Now, this background is a perfect way to have a lot of texture on your card without overdoing it. So I'll just go ahead and place that sentiment right towards the middle. Now the card would be perfect just like this, a really clean and simple card. But remember I did cut out those butterflies and I kinda want them floating around this sentiment strip. So I'll go ahead and bring those in and look how cute these butterflies are, they're just precious. And I'm going to put, randomly place the colors down. So I'll put the orange on the green and then I'll just go ahead and put the green over there on the other side. That's why that panel was cut bigger. And then I'm going to place the blue right on the green. Now you can see I'm kind of bending these right in the middle. So like my butterfly wings will kind of like stand up off of the card. I'm going to use my Gina K Connect glue and I'm just placing that glue right along the spine, let's say, of that butterfly. And then I can go ahead and place it right down and we're going to have a perfect card. Now, why I finished that, I do wanna let you guys know, if you head on over to my blog, I'm going to have the gifts listed there as well. I'm going to have some fun products to give away as well as a gift card. So make sure to comment so you don't forget that you have an opportunity to win some great gifts. My blog is gotjoycreations.com and you can see the picture of the giveaway over there. All right, I'm gonna put down that last butterfly and there we have it. Our card is done. Please make sure to like this video. Consider subscribing to my channel as well. I would greatly appreciate that. And the card is done for today. I will see you guys in another video soon. Don't forget to go to the description box below to see who's next on the hop. Thanks so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.